uh, and to State Secretary Edwin Halvorsen. Uh, sorry we started a bit late. Uh, the budget discussion, <laughs> internal budget discussion this morning at NUPI, so that made me a bit delayed. And also I apologize for the reconstruction work we are doing. Uh, but I think it will be very nice. Uh, it will be more convenient also for you as visitors to NUPI. So please be patient and uh, by the end of the year I think it will be a new and nice premises. Now, just let me also remind you that this seminar will be streamed. So it's also available on, on YouTube. The relationship between Georgia and Norway are progressive, I think, in a positive fashion. For Norway, uh, Georgia, Moldova and Ukraine seems to be key priorities, in particular for this government. Last week, the government uh, announced that it would uh, open an embassy in uh, Tbilisi. And this is, I think, an important step in further enhancing the cooperation. We're also proud uh, today to announce that the NUPI is about to start our research project on Georgia's strategic path together with our partner, uh, the Georgian Institute for Politics. The project will be led by Helge Blokkestrud with uh, Julia Willemsen, I saw Julia somewhere in the back, and Christian Jarde uh, also as participants. To our knowledge, this I think is the first and only research cooperation in the field of social science and international relations uh, between Georgia and Norway. And we are very proud of this and look forward to starting this project by the end of this year. Now, so what better way then of uh, launching a discussion on uh, Georgia's strategic path than to start with the Minister of Foreign Affairs reflecting on the geopolitics in South Caucasus and the Black Sea region. So we are grateful that uh, the Minister has chosen uh, NUPI as a venue for giving his keynote speech. Minister uh, uh, David uh, Salkaliani became a Foreign Minister this summer, in June I believe, and he was the first deputy minister, and he has served as at multiple embassies and uh, diplomatic missions of Georgia. Before he takes the floor today, um, we are honored to welcome State Secretary Edwin Halvorsen. Uh, he will make some introductory remarks. Uh, Edwin is a good friend, I would say, of NUPE, and he also has a very important voice in shaping Norwegian foreign policy. Minister uh, has uh, kindly accepted to engage in a Q&A after his uh, talk. So we will proceed in a way that uh, Edwin Holbosen will give some introductory remarks and then the minister will take the floor immediately. And then uh, there will be a short uh, Q&A session towards the end. We will have to end the session at 11 o'clock. Please, State uh, Secretary Holbosen, the floor is yours. Thank you, thank you, Ulf. Minister, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is a great honor on behalf of the Norwegian MFA to welcome Minister Salkariano to Oslo today. I know you had excellent talks with uh, Minister Eriksen Søreide over breakfast this morning, and we are also delighted that you uh, came to NUPI today to address a wider audience, and I would like to thank uh, Ulf and, and his team at NUPI for, for arranging this as well. In August 2008, the wider world was shocked at the events unfolding in Georgia. Ten years on, the situation is still unresolved. The regions of Abkhazia and South Ossetia remain separated from the rest of Georgia. Russia has still not implemented the 2008 ceasefire agreement, which requires its troops to be withdrawn. On the contrary, Russia's military presence on Georgian soil has been expanded and consolidated. The so-called borderization of the administrative boundary lines between these two regions and the rest of Georgia continues. And steps illegal and illegitimate have been taken to tie these two regions of Georgia closer to the Russian Federation. Since 2014, events in Ukraine have attracted much attention. But we must not forget the situation in Georgia. The conflict remains unresolved and the situation remains unacceptable. Norway fully supports Georgia's sovereignty and territorial integrity within its internationally recognized borders. There is no place for spheres of influence in 21st century Europe. A country's right to choose its future path is not determined by geography. Its destiny is not determined by its neighbors. For obvious reasons, this is as important for Norway as it is for Georgia. At the same time, I would like to commend Georgia for its pragmatic approach to relations with Russia, despite the unresolved conflict. 
I shared the assessment that such an approach is in Georgia's best interests, however difficult it may be in the, situ in the current situation. Georgia is a valued member of the European family of nations. We welcome its determination to become more deeply integrated into European and Euro-Atlantic cooperation. Norway will continue to support Georgia's effort to carry out reforms designed to turn common values into practical realities for the benefit of the people of Georgia and for the stability, security and prosperity of our continent. Minister Salkaliani, relations between Georgia and Norway have been developing positively and dynamically for a long time. We maintain a close cooperation within defense and security, both bilaterally and in within the NATO and partnership framework. JTEC service serving as an example throughout the transatlantic community. This, of course, also includes our polit political dialogue, and I am pleased to see that reform efforts are producing results, that Norwegian tourists and enterprises are discovering your country's many qualities. And not the least, I am very pleased that we announced that we will be opening a Norwegian embassy in Tbilisi next year. It is high time, I would say. We look very much forward to hearing your reflections on the topic of your lecture. And with that, I yield the floor to the Minister. Thank you very much, uh, distinguished colleagues, dear State Secretary. It's a really pleasure for me to be here in the mm, uh, Norwegian mm, uh, Institute of International Affairs. Uh, it's uh, my first official visit in my new capacity as the Minister of Foreign Affairs in Norway. I was just recalling my last visit here. It was exactly 20 years ago when I was part of the Georgian mission in the OSC and during Norwegian chairmanship in the OSC we had a ministerial meeting here in Oslo just uh, uh, in, uh, next uh, in the corner of the Hotel Redison if my memory serves me right. So and it was an important event for Georgia because you know we um, uh, the, our participation in multilateral formats was always uh, really important for to consolidate support of international community especially with regard of uh, the um, uh, conflict-related issues and viol uh, violated territorial integrity of Georgia, which unfortunately still is the problem. Uh, you have rightly mentioned the 10th anniversary since the end of the Georgian-Russian War in 2008, and this year we commemorate uh, this uh, very tragic event, the aggression of Russia against Georgia, which resulted in the occupation of Georgian territories, and unfortunately the process of factual annexation is uh, still going on. Uh, on a daily basis, we are facing a uh, uh, deteriorated human rights situation on occupied territories, installation of barbed wire fences, artificial barriers, uh, the, um, uh, and uh, the reservoir fences across the occupation line uh, is going on. Uh, Russia is increasing its military presence on these territories, while the process of uh, depopulation of uh, occupied territories of Abkhazia and Tsinghwali region is in progress. If you compare situation the pre -war to, to the pre-war situation when back in 2008, uh, the population of uh, Abkhazia before the war was uh, more than 500,000. Now it's 110, 120,000. So it demonstrates how it decreased five, six times. Uh, we have even worse situation in Tsinghwali region, South Ossetia where the, uh, before the war the number of population was 120, now it's only 20,000. And out of uh, 20,000, uh, the 7,000 are Russian military and the members of their families. And Russia is increasing its military presence and turning its terri these territories for a uh, sphere of uh, their influence. And they're simply what they are doing by the process of factual annexation. They are trying to swallow the, um, uh, all these territories into their military, political, and uh, economic influence. Um, even uh, worse scenario, what uh, we are facing right now is the uh, kidnapping of uh, ethnic Georgians, uh, detention, and then uh, even uh, cases of brutal killing, like it was uh, last summer when three Georgians have been kidnapped and two of them kept in custody, and <coughs> one of them, Tatunashvili, was brutally killed, which is unacceptable and which is... Uh, violation of international norms and principles. Uh, you have rightly mentioned uh, about the mm, uh, ceasefire agreement which was signed back in 2008 after the war with the Russian Federation. Unfortunately, Russia is not implementing 
already taken commitments by this agreement. Uh, it's a violation of um, all principles of international no norms. Uh, Russia is not reciprocating Georgia's legally binding pledge on non use of force, and Russia is uh, uh, undermining the process of return of internally displaced persons and refugees. For a small country like Georgia, having more than 300,000 uh, refugees is quite a serious uh, problem and burden. Uh, but we are trying to deal with this problem by constantly bringing the issue for the consideration of international community. And here the role of uh, organizations like uh, OSCE, UN, Council of Europe is really very important. And these organizations are important actors of uh, Geneva International Discussions, which is the, the main format where we are uh, addressing the most uh, problematic issues on which Geneva is based, which is implementation of 2008 ceasefire agreement, return of IDPs, and establishment of international security arrangements. Uh, despite all these difficulties, uh, you know that it's uh, no alternative than to continue to all efforts to try to the solution of this conflict by peaceful means, and Georgia is doing its best to. Uh, present new ideas, new proposals, how to um, uh, establish a close bridge between war-torn communities, between people living on the territories controlled by the Central Georgian authorities and uh, people who are now under the effective control of the Russian Federation in both Abkhazia and Skinwali region. Recently, the Georgian government initiated new peace initiative, which we call uh, step to better future, and this initiative envisages the sharing all the positive uh, benefits Georgia is getting from the process of EU integration with people living on the other side of occupation line. So we are trying to present the status neutral approach on uh, DCFTA, which is deep and comprehensive free trade agreement with the European Union on trade related issues also on educational dimension, as well as people-to-people uh, -people contacts. And freedom of movement is uh, one of the important uh, dimension of um, uh, this initiative. Um, Georgia uh, has signed association agreement with European Union in 2014, and uh, integration into European and Euro-Atlantic structures is a uh, uh, key foreign policy priority for uh, Georgian government. Um, uh, we also see all this uh, process as a very effective mechanism and instrument how to uh, make Georgia more attractive for people living on the other side of occupation line by strengthening our state institutions, by building vibrant democratic society, um, society where human rights are protected, where national minority rights are protected, a uh, country which is... Uh, uh, with well-developed uh, economic structures. Uh, and this is our strategy and our vision, how we see uh, the prospects of restoring our territorial integrity by making Georgia more attractive. This is our vision and our policy. Uh, and here we believe this process of uh, Georgia-EU integration is really very helpful. Uh, we realized that the um, association agreement, which was signed in 2014 together with a deep and comprehensive free trade agreement, is not a membership agreement. It's rather an agreement of Georgia's gradual economic integration and political association with Europe. But the process itself is really very interesting because uh, in this process helps us to modernize our economy. It helps us to strengthen our state institutions and making Georgia more resilient to all these uh, challenges we are facing right now. That's, uh, that's why the main um, task for the government is uh, uh, to uh, modernize country, to move closer to the uh, European family of nations. Um, and uh, in this regard, we demonstrate very serious progress and uh, very significant uh, achievements, like association agreement, like visa, uh, liberalization, which was the important decision by European Union to grant to all citizens of Georgia the visa a free movement in Schengen countries. Uh, this was not only a technical decision, this was important political message. 
which will uh, enhance uh, people-to-people -people contacts, uh, student exchanges, as well as uh, business community, uh, very uh, close uh, cooperation. Uh, but uh, we have even more ambitious uh, plans and agenda how to go beyond uh, association agreement and association agenda which Georgia is successfully implementing. <coughs> Uh, that's why we are working intensively, unilaterally, uh, to prepare country functionally for our eventual goal, and our eventual goal is uh, full-fledged membership in the European Union. Right now we are working on a concept paper, we call it uh, uh, Roadmap to Europe, and uh, this is a paper which um, considers more sectoral cooperation with uh, our European partners, it considers more active participation in different EU programs and agencies, more physical con uh, integration in different sectors uh, like energy, like uh, infrastructure, communications, and also uh, establishing uh, different formats of uh, cooperation with the European Union, like uh, recent initiative to establish security dialogue with uh, European Union, and also unprecedented format which was suggested from EU Commission President last, uh, this last um, May when he was visiting Georgia to have um, the format of uh, um, EU Commission uh, high-level meeting with the Georgian government. And the first uh, meeting of this format will take place in the coming days on November 21st uh, in Brussels. There will be a meeting uh, between Georgian government headed by Prime Minister of Georgia together with uh, uh, different ministers uh, will visit Brussels and will have uh, intensive consultations with our European partners at the level of EU presidency and uh, council presidency and uh, EU commissioners will talk in uh, sectoral cooperation in economic dimension as well as uh, agriculture, environment, education, security cooperation. These are the areas where we will talk with our partners uh, about our future perspectives. This will be a meeting of um, future-oriented uh, uh, plans and ideas, new ideas, uh, and uh, I believe that uh, this meeting will bring very positive results and we'll have uh, new uh, avenues of cooperation on sectoral cooperation with the uh, European Union. Uh, we understand that uh, the process uh, which is uh, going on in uh, Europe, Europe itself is facing a lot of challenges, uh, the migration problem, uh, as well as uh, budgetary issues which are discussed right now, uh, the Brexit uh, and uh, the upcoming uh, elections in the European Parliament. Uh, there are a lot of issues uh, on which uh, Europe is currently occupied, uh, but um, despite this, uh, we are continuing our efforts uh, to analyze car current situation and to use this uh, momentum for uh, strategically thinking what is beyond 2020. And 2020, I'm mentioning in the context of Easter Partnership, we all remember that in 2017 there was a uh, Eastern Partnership Summit meeting, which uh, adopted important uh, decision, 20 deliverables for 2020. And this decision is bringing its very positive practical results. One of the practical achievement of this decision is uh, uh, decision to uh, open a European school in, in Tbilisi, which, which is the uh, first uh, European school in the region. Uh, where the um, students from all Eastern Partnership countries have uh, opportunity to get education um, in European, uh, according to European standards. Uh, so it's uh, uh, important to highlight that Georgia is recognized as a front runner among uh, Eastern Partnership countries. This is uh, not my evaluation, this is the assessment of uh, uh, our European partners, which we've got recently, I was attending the, in Luxembourg a couple of weeks ago, the Eastern Partnership Ministerial Meeting, and uh, this ministerial gave very positive evaluation of, of, uh, to Georgia, to Georgia's performance on the Eastern Partnership. So it means that uh, when Georgia delivers, it has to be reciprocated. 
So we want this uh, fair, repro fair approach from our European partners and more for more principle in practice. That's why we are uh, working intensively. We are talking with our e European partners that Georgia deserves more integrational um, um, uh, activities demonstrated from uh, our European partners. Um, another important priority of Georgia's uh, foreign policy is uh, the integration into Euro-Atlantic structures. And NATO is an institution with uh, an organization with whom we are developing very constructive, very intensive cooperation. And here, again, in this direction, Georgia demonstrates very significant progress. Um, uh, this year, we had a um, a NATO summit meeting in Brussels, and it was first time when Georgia was discussed in unprecedented uh, format. Uh, this is the format of uh, the meeting of heads of states and governments of NATO allies, where uh, Georgian issue together with Ukraine in the regional security dimension was considered. Um, Georgia is the biggest per capita contributor to the resolute support mission. Uh, we are continuing our participation in this mission together with our NATO allies, uh, shoulder to shoulder in combat. Although we have suffered casualties, 32 Georgian soldiers died in Afghanistan. Uh, and uh, we realize that for a small country like Georgia, it's a quite a big number, but it's our contribution to the global security. Uh, and we're going to continue to pa actively participate in uh, bringing stability in the region. Uh, at the same time, we are demonstrating very significant progress in the practical dimension of uh, cooperation with NATO, and it was reflected in the declaration which was adopted during the last uh, summit in Brussels. This is a very substantive declaration, three-page declaration, where, which describes the whole um, area and the whole range of issues of uh, cooperation with our NATO allies. It highlights, reiterates uh, the Bucharest summit decision of 2008 that Georgia will become NATO member. It also stresses uh, the fact that Georgia has all practical tools like NATO Georgia Council, like annual national program, like substantial NATO Georgia package. Um, uh, as an uh, all practical tools for eventual membership. Uh, but uh, also it uh, has reference to the membership action plan and uh, uh, we realize that it's a uh, political, uh, political um, element which is uh, in this um, uh, process and uh, uh, from practical point of view it is recognized that Georgia has all everything for eventual membership uh, but uh, there are the, the map is becoming a kind of political barrier for Georgia to become a NATO member uh, but uh, Georgia is an aspirant country is demonstrating all progress and all um, uh, benefits and all the positive results of uh, aspirant country has to have uh, on its way to, to, to the final membership. And it's really important to mention that in this resolution there are some practical uh, aspects uh, of cooperation mentioned, especially in the uh, Black Sea dimension context, and there are very important elements, uh, four or five concrete elements, uh, how to cooperate in the uh, Black Sea uh, dimension, and uh, we believe that uh, these decisions have to be translated into practical dimension, and it will be bring more stability and more security to Georgia. While we are talking about cooperation within NATO, we are also developing uh, a very intensive bilateral cooperation with uh, all of our NATO allies, including uh, the strategic partners, uh, United States. Uh, uh, which uh, is an uh, important strategic partner for Georgia. Especially our cooperation is uh, all-time high, uh, especially in the defense and security. Mm, um, we are successfully implementing uh, the Memorandum of Understanding, which was signed with the United States in 2017, and this memorandum is successfully implemented. But we are also thinking about the 
uh, future aspects of cooperation in defense and security. Uh, we want this for increasing our defense capabilities to increase Georgia's resilience to all these uh, uh, challenges, security challenges we are facing. Of course, we are not using our NATO integration process and the bilateral defense and security cooperation against third countries. Uh, and it is done only for strengthening our resilience and to increase our defense capabilities. I would also like to elaborate a little bit more on um, our importance of Georgia's and geopolitical uh, location and its uh, um, uh, role in the region. Uh, it's, uh, it's not a secret that there are a lot of important geopolitical, geostrategically important uh, projects going through Georgian territories, like oil and gas pipelines, which uh, connects the Caspian oil-rich region through Georgian territory to Turkey and from Turkey to Europe. Uh, we have uh, recently launched a new important infrastructural pro project, Bakut Pilisi Hars Railway, which is the shortest route which connects east to west. Uh, we heard about um, uh, Chinese initiative, Belt and Road. There, there is a huge competition in the region, but uh, the attractiveness of this route, Georgian route, is that Georgia demonstrates a very a positive uh, trend, especially pattern, especially in the economic dimension. A country which is creating the business-friendly atmosphere from doing business. Uh, recently, Georgia was promoted from uh, po po position nine to position six uh, worldwide. So we are even in the higher position in fighting corruption, eradicating petty level corruption as well as elite corruption. So according to evaluation from different international organizations, Georgia is, uh, has uh, even higher position than uh, some EU member states. Uh, so we realize that uh, uh, ensuring stability uh, and uh, minimizing risks and challenges coming from outside will create a very solid ground for countries' development. That's why government's responsibility is to ensure stability for future prosperity and development. This is a very ambitious agenda of the current Georgian government and the current uh, prime minister. As it was rightly mentioned, this government was uh, approved uh, this summer as a part of this government. Uh, uh, we presented our vision um, of future Georgia to the parliament and uh, the Prime Minister initiated the uh, new sixth principle on which the new Georgian government uh, is based. Uh, one of them, I have already m uh, talked about this, is that the f number one principle is full integration into European and Euro-Atlantic structures. And also to second point is to, uh, to enhance uh, uh, economic um, uh, activities and to uh, ensure inclusive economic growth of Georgia. Georgia in this direction also demonstrates very positive uh, dynamics. Uh, according to recent uh, data, the, during the first uh, year of the first half of this year, uh, GDP growth was 5.5%. Uh, and uh, through innovative economic approaches, we want to revitalize our economy to make Georgia more attractive for businesses, for investments, for um, uh, foreign uh, visitors. Uh, another priority is education, uh, and also priority is uh, <coughs> developing uh, Georgia through Georgian territories, important uh, infrastructure projects. So we have very ambitious agenda, and here definitely we need very strong support from our partners, from our allies, and uh, uh, using this opportunity of, to being here in Norway, which is the strongest supporter of Georgia's territorial integrity and uh, sovereignty as well as Georgia's European and Euro-Atlantic aspiration process, I would like to express my gratitude to the Norwegian government. Uh, State Minister, you were absolutely right to mention that very productive uh, meeting uh, this morning I had with Minister of Foreign Affairs, and we have discussed many issues of our bilateral cooperation, future perspectives. I'm going back uh, to Georgia with very positive news that uh, Norway will open its embassy in Tbilisi and it will further 
encourage and enhance our bilateral co cooperation, which is exemplary. Um, the, we have um, Norwegian companies which have already invested in Georgian economy, like uh, Clean Energy Group, uh, which invested um, several hundred million U.S. dollars in uh, hydropower um, development. Uh, there are new ideas, new plans, how to uh, attract more businesses, uh, big companies as well as small and medium type enterprises. Uh, it's uh, very positive that we have very positive dynamic with regard of growing uh, number of visitors. Uh, although figure is not high, but comparing to the previous years, it's growing and it's, it's really very positive. And I hope very much that uh, opening of the Norwegian embassy in Tbilisi will bring also positive results in this direction. This year we expect more than 8.5 million visitors to Georgia, which is two times more than the total population of Georgia. So it, uh, it's a serious uh, challenge for us and we have to um, uh, catch up the growing number with uh, the improved uh, services and infrastructure in tourism industry. And here as well will be, I think it's an important area of our future cooperation. So I hope very much that uh, uh, this cooperation between Georgia and Norway will bring very positive uh, results in future. So I will uh, limit myself uh, by these uh, introductory remarks and would be glad to answer your questions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Sankaliane, for this uh, overview of, uh, of the strategic choices uh, and pathways. You covered uh, the European integration, uh, the NATO integration, uh, and also the <coughs> bilateral kind of paths. So thank you so much for this. Now we open the floor for for discussion. Uh, uh, Helge Blokis, so who's the one leading the Or Georgia project? Now you got something from the minister. Maybe <laughs> you can supplement something or thank please. you uh, for the minister for an interesting uh, speech. Um, um, you started your speech by talking about uh, Abkhazia and the Singhali region, or South Ossetia. And I, I would like to return to that. Um, earlier this fall, I was crossing the administrative border from Sogdidi to Abkhazia, and I was really struck by the development of infrastructure on the Sogdidi side, uh, infrastructure that is set up to cater for the needs of the uh, population of the other side. And uh, later on, uh, while conducting interviews uh, in Abkhazia, the issues of the Georgian initiatives when it comes to healthcare uh, and education, as you mentioned, but also trade, came up repeatedly. So you are clearly making some headway when it comes to uh, winning the hearts and minds of the population. But I was wondering if you could say a few words about uh, the political level, if there is also some prospect of breaking the, uh, the impasse in, in uh, the political uh, level here, uh, uh, beyond what you're doing on the people-to-people -people level. Thank you. Yeah, we'll maybe collect questions or? No, please, uh, yeah. Yeah. we have some time. Yeah, yeah. On um, Abkhazia and the uh, Tsrinvali region, South Ossetia, you're absolutely right. Your, your reading of the current situation is uh, the similar of uh, our vision, you know, that uh, the our a policy is uh, to develop uh, country, especially in the areas which are the, the next to the occupation line, especially you have mentioned Zugdidi and uh, uh, the big uh, projects we are developing in this um, uh, vicinity of the um, uh, occupation territories. Uh, and uh, in Zugdidi we are constructing the uh, modern hospital which uh, will be um, an opportunity and chance for people living on the other side of the occupation line to come uh, across the line and to get the uh, appropriate uh, health care aid, uh, as well as um, the big uh, trade uh, um, infrastructure which is developed uh, in Zugdidi region. It's also part of our strategy. The big um, uh, port uh, of Anaklia, which is right now under construction, which is also close to the occupation line, just uh, 10, 20 kilometers from uh, uh, Zugdidi, and it's also a, 
big infrastructure project. So it's a, an Aklia deep sea port construction which is going on right now with the participation of Georgian company as well as a US-based uh, Conti group and with the participation of SSA Marine which is a Seattle-based operational um, port uh, operation company. The, and uh, this is the um, very important uh, project which uh, uh, creates uh, uh, additional uh, jobs uh, in the region and it is also a very increases attractiveness of uh, this region for people living on the other side of occupation line. Of course uh, we are offering uh, the new uh, initiatives also which I have described in the uh, new initiative which we call Step to Better Future which considers now all this um, um, uh, status neutral approach on trade related issues with uh, uh, Abkhazia as well as uh, uh, educational uh, system uh, uh, to, uh, to attract people and the young generation from uh, uh, other side of um, occupation line to, to be included in the uh, Georgian universities and to uh, give them chance to graduate in the best uh, uh, universities of Europe, of course, uh, through Georgia, then with the support of Georgia, there was a partnership of our European uh, colleagues. And uh, this is the process we are trying to communicate, although it's not easy, even at the people-to-people -people level, because Russia is closely watching. They are also trying to undermine this process, because it's not in their interest uh, to Georgia to build bridges between war-torn communities. And that's why they are doing their best to undermine this process. But the main format of communication with uh, um, uh, de facto is the Geneva International Discussion. So this is a unique format which was established uh, uh, back in 2008 after the war with the Russian Federation with the participation of Russia, Georgia, and main actors like uh, UN, OSC, European Union, which are presented by their representatives as a co-chair and with participation Georgia, Russian Federation and the United States. Also, we are talking with uh, uh, participants from Abkhazia and Srinvali region at an individual level. They are not present in uh, Geneva International Discussions in their so-called uh, capacity of um, uh, de facto. So there we are talking with them in individual capacity. So we are talking about many issues in Geneva. We are talking about security related issues. There are two groups. The first group which is focusing on security related issues on implementation of 2008 ceasefire agreement, establishment of international security arrangements and the return of IDPs. And the second group which is, which is focusing on humanitarian dimension of cooperation. Uh, unfortunately, this uh, process is not going uh, 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 in a uh, more effective way, in a desirable uh, way we wish to uh, go, but uh, uh, this is the only format where we are trying to communicate with uh, representatives from uh, de facto uh, from Abkhazia and Skinvali region and try to communicate, to deliver all these messages. So here, definitely, we need more uh, intensified work and also more engagement from our European partners, and we are in a close coordination with the uh, European Union to be more engaged in promoting this kind of uh, discussion um, uh, within the Geneva format. Mm. Okay, thank you so much. Then we have somebody from uh, on the back there. Guttum Vik. My name is Gudrunvik. I was the ambassador to the OSCE at the time of the invasion, and we visited Osse South Ossetia just a few months before. And my impression of South Ossetia is that it was really a dump. It was uh, the I infrastructure was very worn down. It consisted mainly of some rather impenetrable bush and shrub, and uh, which seemed very, very well suited for guerrilla warfare and for very little else. And they have some unruly people, which uh, they were headed by a former Komsomol uh, leader and wrestling champion, who displayed no particular charm or statesmanship. Uh, so uh, I, if you asked me if I would like to have responsibility for South Ossetia, I would energetically de decline 
uh, the Russians shouldn't be rewarded, of course, for ag aggression, but uh, uh, to have a responsibility for developing this uh, region is more of a punishment than a reward, in my opinion. And uh, of course, uh, it's, uh, I, I, I'm happy that things are going quite well now, but Georgia's enormous potent potentiality for tourism, for instance, is not clearly not being fully fully exploited because of the uh, political situation in the region. So you have, would have very much to gain from a normalization, um, uh, and also, of course, the the, the trade and tourism from Russia, which is the main uh, trade was the main trading partner, is also suffering. So. Um, uh, what you what you say? Uh, I am uh, aware that territorial integrity is is uh, very important. On the other hand, uh, the Georgia's po policy policies vis-à-vis -vis the the minority populations uh, before uh, the conflict were not uh, always, I think, beyond reproach. So there, uh, they, the um, the populations in in. Um, the minority population had a case for wanting more, uh, more in the more uh, autonomy. I think so. A, a very long uh, diatribe, but um, and very, um, uh, very uh, provocative. I realize. But what is your comment? Uh, uh, can you just uh, allow me to just uh, take the next question as well, yeah, yeah. because they're sitting okay. next to each other. Okay. So. I'll be quick. Thank you very much for interesting introductions. Uh, I have, have a question on policies in relation to Russia, because my uh, impression was that there is a different approach with this government than the former government and the Saakashvili government. So could you just uh, uh, address that? Just tell us, is there a difference? What is the difference? And it would be interesting to know, given that Russia is your neighbor and also there are other aspects to your relation, what things can you cooperate with Russia on? Thank you. Okay. Uh, 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 thank you, Ambassador, for, for your observations and analysis of the situation. Uh, uh, and, um, of course, the situation in Srinwali region in uh, South Ossetia is really very uh, um, hard and the very... Uh, uh, negative development. Uh, I have mentioned this depopulation which is in progress, uh, which uh, demonstrates the clear humanitarian disaster on the ground. You know, these uh, territories are tend to be only uh, uh, Russian military bases. You know, they are uh, um, exercising effective control on uh, these territories. The, everything is under uh, Russian control. The um, uh, budget, the, they are signing so-called treaties with uh, uh, these entities, um, military, political, uh, and economic treaties, and um, by signing these treaties, they are trying to incorporate these regions into their uh, political, military, and uh, economic influence. Uh, the, the all crossing points are very seriously controlled by Russian uh, so-called uh, border guards. Um, uh, for example, in Srinwali region, uh, the, there were six crossing points. Uh, these uh, crossing points are now reduced uh, to two. Uh, absolutely different situation is in Trinvali region. There are no crossing points as, at all. There are only barbed wire fences, reservoir fences, artificial barriers. People uh, are denied to get have access to their agricultural land to work. They have uh, no access to get education in their native language. Uh, and uh, what is most alarming, I have already elabor elaborated on the new, uh, on a daily basis, we are facing uh, this uh, kidnapping and uh, um, um, interrogation of ethnic Georgians and uh, uh, sometimes uh, the mo what is most uh, alarming, brutal killing, which was the case last summer on uh, Tatunashvili and before Otkhozoria in Abkhazia. So uh, in this situation, what we are offering, we are offering, you know, uh, all these um, uh, peace initiatives. Our response uh, to the uh, barbed wire fences is uh, to uh, totally eliminate all these barriers, you know, and to share with them all these benefits. We are 
uh, getting from the process of the EU integration, the freedom of movement. We want them to be they isolated from uh, Russian Federation. We want we don't we what they are doing. They are simply self isolating themselves from uh, the rest of the world by putting them in this uh, the, in this uh, very isolated uh, area. Uh, regarding the question with, uh, with, uh, on uh, Russian Federation, yes, in 2012, new Georgian government uh, declared a new policy vis-a-vis -vis Russian Federation, and uh, the idea was to de-escalate situation and to focus on the issues where we can get, uh, reach consensus, uh, like uh, trade-related issues, like people-to-people -people contacts, humanitarian aspects of uh, cooperation, uh, transportation, restoration of direct flights between Georgia and the Russian Federation. And the um, idea was that this positive gesture from Georgian side uh, to have reciprocal uh, movement from Russian side and to have some positive impact on most problematic issues we are discussing in Geneva, or status-related issues. Unfortunately, this is not happening. Situation is becoming more and more worse, especially on occupied territories. Uh, to this very constructive approach, Russia intensified this, uh, uh, the installation of barbed wire fences and artificial embankments across the occupation line. Uh, of course, there is a tendency of uh, improving people-to-people -people contact, which is a very um, easily noticeable in, uh, on the number of uh, tourists uh, coming from Russian Federation to Georgia. Uh, this year we expect uh, more than uh, 8.5 million tourists uh, to Georgia, which I have said that it's more than two times more than the total population. And uh, Russians are more than 1.5 million among uh, the total uh, number of visitors. So Georgia is becoming more and more uh, attractive destination for tourists from Russian Federation. Um, so this is our policy. We have no visa restrictions for Russian citizens, while uh, Russians have visas on Georgian citizens. All Georgian citizens uh, have to get Russian visas to enter the territory of Russian Federation, when from Georgian side there, is, uh, there are no restrictions. So our response to these barriers, uh, artificial barriers, is uh, the, the total elimination of uh, these um, uh, artificial obstacles. The Russian companies are free to um, invest in Georgia, and uh, there are a lot of Russian companies which uh, operate free in, on Georgian market. Um, so, uh, unfortunately, this uh, has no positive implication on uh, political uh, uh, or status-related issues vis-à-vis -vis the uh, territorial problems we are discussing in Geneva. So, but despite this, uh, we will continue this uh, um, uh, uh, constructive policy uh, because we understand that uh, there is no alternative to the peaceful settlement. Uh, we we uh, we we want to realize that. that uh, uh, country is uh, developing, country is uh, building, it's a uh, vibrant democratic society and uh, also uh, it uh, could be an example uh, how to uh, develop country and uh, how to make Georgia more resilient to the challenges and more attractive for people uh, of Abkhazia and Srinvali region. So this is uh, our response uh, to um, non-reciprocal attitude from Russian side to the very constructive uh, steps demonstrated by Georgian side. Uh, can I ask a question myself? Yeah. Um, basically, two questions. Uh, the first uh, is let's do what you have said, uh, Minister, is th that you have spelled out what you call pathways or roads towards <coughs> closer Euro-Atlantic integration. So, but in my interpretation, at least the goals are very clear. That's where you're heading. Um, at the same time, the steps or the paths in order to achieve this um, uh, is, as I understand, is the first a strategy to make Georgia attractive. Mm -hmm. um, and secondly, to make the necessary steps and stepwise incremental 
uh, kind of case by case adjustment in order to facilitate this. This is uh, very good and sound. Um, but then two questions. The first is, uh, is there something in the society in Georgia that will somehow trigger some kind of fatigue mm -hmm. in this process? Or uh, if this is not seen as an incremental process or stepwise process, but do you foresee now during the next few years, years, months, a critical decision point that brings you over to one stage or the other. So the critical junctures yeah, yeah. in this. Yeah. Uh, so that's the first step. And the other one is, uh, what could, uh, sticking to the metaphor again, what would derail this process from within or from externally, uh, over external actors and factors? So. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you very much. Very good questions, both. Um, uh, and. Uh, I'll try to answer. Of course, um, uh, as I have mentioned, the, the priority is a full integration into European and Euro-Atlantic structures. We are doing a lot, demonstrating progress, concrete deliverables. Uh, and uh, at the same time, it's really important to this to be reflected in the concrete uh, results uh, on the membership path. Um, that's why, you know, it's a um, process is really, it will become more complicated if we fail to deliver. Uh, that's why it can cause serious frustration in the Georgian society. You know, the expectation is very high. You know, constantly we are speaking about our progress, uh, both in uh, with regard of the EU and the NATO, and it has to be reciprocated. It has to be reflected into concrete decisions of the membership pass. If it is not the case, of course, uh, uh, it will cause uh, serious frustration and. Uh, um, uh, we have to deal with the, with this uh, frustration. Uh, for, for, for the time being, um, uh, it's um, a very good situation because according to all recent polls, uh, more than 75% uh, of Georgian population supports Georgia NATO integration process. More than 85% support Georgia EU integration process. So this is big advantage for, for the government. You know, when you have such solid support of your own population, it encourages you to continue very bold steps and to continue your efforts to bring country closer to the um, European Union uh, and NATO. What can derail us from this process? Of course, uh, the external interference and uh, the violation of security situation. This is definitely the uh, the factor which can undermine this process. And of course, um, the stable development uh, internally, you know, that we are, um, uh, as I have mentioned, we are building vibrant democratic society with the, uh, the Georgia demonstrated uh, mature democracy, having the very uh, positive uh, elections uh, starting from 2012, the presidential elections, parliamentary elections, local elections, the recent presidential elections that uh, we are now in the second tour of uh, um, election campaign. Uh, which demonstrates maturity of our democracy. And we believe that this is the area where we have to focus on because uh, we have to continue all these efforts, both internally uh, to develop country, to, for, to, uh, to build a vibrant democratic society with strong institutions and to minimize risks and challenges from outside. And in this case, I believe that uh, if we uh, continue this positive uh, trend, uh, momentum will come, and we, we have to demonstrate strategic patience for this moment. Very well, but uh, could you maybe also reflect a bit on the what I indicated about the time dimension? Is there a critical juncture? Is there a critical decision point that you see as very important now in oh. this process? Uh, you mentioned it post twenty twenty. Yeah, agenda. 20, yeah, uh, yeah. It's um, uh, difficult to elaborate. You know what is a critical point? Uh, you know. Historically, uh, our nation always demonstrated, uh, you know, the resilience to all these uh, problems. And um, Georgia was uh, subject to invasion, occupation. We have struggled for our freedom, independence, uh, and always prevailed. And uh, I believe that uh, this will be the case again. Uh, but uh, for this, we need uh, uh, to continue all these uh, efforts. And uh, here we need a very strong support from our European partners, because alone we'll fail to achieve uh, these results. And I'm very grateful to our uh, 
uh, EU and NATO member states who, uh, who are supporting uh, Georgia on its way towards uh, our eventual goals. And as mountain, uh, yeah. mountain countries and people working in the mountains, they know that every step is uh, somewhat critical if uh, it's a balancing act. Uh, please. That's a final question. Yeah. If there's somebody else who wants to join in. Yeah, I think we're running uh, yeah. late. We have to finish in two minutes. So be very brief. Thank you. My name is Ort Gunnar Skagestad and my only experience with Georgia, direct personal experience with Georgia, including South Ossetia, took place many years ago. That was in the context of my special assignment as a special representative of the OSCE to Chechnya uh, during the more turbulent times. Yeah. Uh, our perspective from Norwegian side on Georgia is mainly based on two, uh, two uh, let's say, uh, two issues or two uh, aspects. First of all, your relations with Russia, and then your relations with the West, uh, including EU and the Atlantic, uh, uh, well, the whole uh, the West in, uh, shortly. But you have more neighbors than Be that. Be short, please. Yes. Yep. Uh, short, it means three. That means Turkey, Armenia, and Azerbaijan. How are your relations with those three countries? Okay. Thank you. Uh, Could you just pass the microphone to the former ambassador of Azerbaijan as well? Uh, so that uh Thank you. It's a great thing to be a former ambassador and to have regained our freedom of expression. <laughs> uh, my good friend and colleague uh, Guton Wik made use of that uh, privilege uh, just now. Uh, I must compliment the minister on this very measured response to, uh, uh, to Guttorm's uh, uh, perspective on South Ossetia, which I found very strange. The invasion of South Ossetia was a tragedy for the Georgian ethnic farmers living there. They were killed or expelled, and many of them live now in miserable conditions in refugee camps. So uh, your impression of South Ossetia Guttorm, is not really, uh, what shall I say, appropriate here. Thank you. You can uh, you can pick and choose whatever you want to minister. Okay. Uh, so but we have to finish it. I think yeah, your yeah. assistant yeah, say in, uh, in a minute. The three our neighbors have been mentioned: Turkey, Azerbaijan, Armenia. We are developing very uh, strong cooperation with all of them. Turkey is our strategic partner. There are a lot of uh, uh, geostrategically important projects where Turkey is participating on Georgian territory, like Baku Tbilisi Jehan pipeline, where the Turkey is the one of the important players as the oil pipeline which connects Caspian oil rich region through Georgia and Turkey. Turkey is the biggest uh, trade partner with Georgia, the second partner after the European Union. Uh, we are developing very strong cooperation with Turkey and it's in our vital strategic interest uh, the, to 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 um, uh, to be Turkey to be stable and developed and uh, prosperous country. So it's uh, it's uh, the one of the main important neighbor. We have uh, also st very strategic partnership with Azerbaijan, which is also the uh, important neighbor and strategic partner and the main energy supplier to Georgia and uh, all these uh, important projects. I have mentioned Baku, Baku Tbilisi Gars Railway and all these strategically important energy projects are linked with Azerbaijan. And we have, um, it's the worst to mention that we have uh, uh, the uh, uh, national minorities of uh, Armenia and Azerbaijan living peacefully uh, in Georgia, and uh, it's in our strategical interest to uh, to find the political solution of conflict in Nagorno-Karabakh. Armenia with Armenia, have, we have also excellent relations. Uh, recently, uh, the prime minister paid uh, his uh, first official visit both to Armenia and Azerbaijan. We had a very good discussion with the current Armenian leadership, the prime minister. And we hope that after parliamentary elections in Armenia, the prospects of uh, the peaceful settlement of uh, <coughs> Nagorno-Karabakh conflict will emerge. And uh, I'm not talking uh, about this uh, just uh, on a general base, but uh, it was a very a positive uh, feedback uh, and evaluation coming from both of our my Armenian and Azerbaijani colleagues about their recent meeting. 
uh, and also the meeting between Armenia and, and uh, Azerbaijani presidents. So I hope very much that uh, new circumstances uh, also will have some positive impact on the political settlement, of course. Okay, thank you so much, Minister, for sharing so much of your time uh, with us this morning. Uh, it's been a pleasure to listen to and to hear more on the, your reflections on the pathway of, of, uh, of Georgia. And also, I think... Uh, uh, we should uh, keep in mind that this is exactly the same pathway that Norway is on. Uh, close European integration and also close a Atlantic orientation. So it's not so surprising. Uh, but but it, uh, is, it is also, of course, riddled with difficulties. Uh, but it requires, at the same time, um, a clear strategy and careful steps uh, as we go along. And I think you reflected a bit of that. So thank you also thank you very uh, much. so much to Erden Halvorsen for joining in uh, uh, in the beginning of the seminar. And thank you all of you for, for coming here this morning. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.